An ore digger is someone who doesn't give up, who pushes forward, who isn't afraid to learn something new, and isn't afraid to face a problem and do it the best they possibly can. It means being a problem solver by taking your own experiences and applying your unique skills. Everyone who comes here wants to learn and they want to get better and to do things that are really challenging. The people at Mines are always willing to take that extra step. It's very admirable to see everyone like chase something that they truly love. There are so many people at Mines that really want to invest in you, that really care about you, that want you to succeed. I feel like the professors like actually care about who I am as a person and they've tried to get to know me during my time here. I've met my best friends at Mines, even a lot of the faculty and administration I consider friends now. I've met so many adventurous, dynamic, interesting people at Mines that have just really inspired me to be the best person I can be. It amazes me just all the people around me are so hardworking and intelligent. Mines isn't really a solo sport. You have to have, you know, friends in your major, friends in your classes where you can really team together, help each other learn and build each other up. Some of my best friends are, are part of the ROTC program and, um, you know, it really shapes you into a, a hardworking person. Everyone is really just here to get through it together and that sense of kind of shared achievement is one of the things that makes Mines so different. I think some of the traditions, uh, especially M-Climb, are really amazing. You know, singing the fight song together and just getting to feel that sense of, you know, coming back to campus. It's like how I start the school year is, you know, go to the M-Climb and it's just, it just makes me feel more at home. It's really exciting to see the next generation of students come through and show them, hey, we're already a family. It's day one, but, you know, Minds is here for you. I still remember my very first physics class in the uh, classroom right behind me right now in uh, CTLM, and the Michael Morphew in that classroom is certainly not the same as the Michael Morphew sitting right here, so it's just been an incredible journey. I came to Minds to prove to myself that I could be an engineer, and I'm leaving Minds to help speak up for others so that they can also be engineers. I think I came to Minds mostly just to get a really good education, but I'm definitely leaving Minds with a community of people around me that I know I can rely on for the rest of my life. I came to Mines ready to take on Mines. I'm leaving Mines ready to take on the world. I'd like to thank my, my mom, my dad, my brother, my girlfriend for, for their continued support. Administration, faculty, friends, peers here at Mines. I want to thank my Sigma Kappa sisters for getting me through all those rough times and believing in me. To my family, to my friends, and to my classmates, thank you so much. I wouldn't be here without you. And I truly believe that we're greater than the sum of our parts together. Thank you, Minds. I am so happy that I did this. We succeeded at Minds. What's next? Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the platform party as they enter Lockridge Arena. Today's ceremonial pop and circumstance was performed and recorded by students in the Minds Music Program. Today's processional is led by Dr. Tracy Camp, Department Head for Computer Science, and Dr. Zahi Kath, Faculty Senate President. Dr. Camp is carrying the University Mace, a symbol of knowledge authority dating back to the 13th century. It's top by Blaster, our beloved school mascot. Dr. Kath is carrying a replica of the 16th century book, the De Re Metallica, widely considered to be the foundational book on mining and metallurgy. This book represents the body of knowledge shared by Mines faculty and students, and its opening and closing on stage indicate the beginning and closing of today's ceremony. Platform party members include President Paul Johnson and Provost Dr. Tom Boyd, department heads, vice provosts, and vice presidents. Members of the Colorado School of Mines trustees, including alumnus and chairman Tom Jordan, alumnus and trustee Patty Starzer, 
alumnus and trustee Charles McNeil, and trustee Denise Burgess. Continuing the processional are Mines faculty, and please welcome our bachelor's degree candidates who are entering Locker Arena from the stands. Today, we are conferring 932 bachelor's degrees. The flags on stage represent the home countries of our graduates, including Angola, Austria, Benin, Cameroon, Canada, China, Colombia, Ethiopia, France, Germany, India, Indonesia, Iraq, Israel, Japan, Kazakhstan, Kenya, Kuwait, Malaysia, Mexico, Mongolia, the Netherlands, Norway, Oman, Pakistan, Russia, Saudi Arabia, South Korea, Thailand, the United Arab Emirates, the United Kingdom, Vietnam, and the United States of America. Please remain standing until all of our graduating seniors have entered Lockridge Arena.
Please remain standing for the national anthem performed by the Colorado School of Mines Quartet, the gold standard joined by graduates of the music program. So proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming. Whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. And the rocket's red glare, the bombs flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the Please remain standing as the gold standard will now perform the mine's alma mater. The alma mater opens convocation and begins commencement, marking the transition from mine students to mine's alumni. You can find the alma mater's lyrics on the inside front cover of your program. Raise your voices, engineers, your devotion sing. To the greatest school of minds, let the chorus ring. Hail to the CSM, to our hearts most dear. Every minor lords thy name, and every engineer. Honor, glory to thy name, these we pledge anew. While we live to sing thy fame, alma mater true. Hail to thee, school of minds, silver and the blue. Every minor sings thy praise, O oh, alma mater true. Please be seated. Please welcome the 17th president of the Colorado School of Mines, Dr. Paul Johnson. Thank you. How about another round of applause for our student singers? Okay. All right. Thanks everyone for being here on this very special day. On behalf of Colorado School Minds, welcome to our commencement ceremony for the class of 2019. It was only a few years ago that as first year students, our graduates carried their 10 pound rocks up to the M through a barrage of water wielding and fight song singing upper class students. Upon reaching the M and adding their rocks to those of the generations of mine students who preceded them, they then painted those rocks, perhaps getting a little more of the paint on themselves than on the rocks. The M climb was their welcome to the mines community, the symbolic start of their mines education, and the first of many challenges that these graduates overcame on their path to this ceremony today. With that memory in mind, we'd like to start with a moment of reflection offered up by student Jeremiah Joyner, who will be graduating today with a degree in engineering physics. Please join me in welcoming Jeremiah to the podium. Members of the faculty and administration, fellow students, family and friends, it is my honor and privilege to offer an invocation for this commencement ceremony. As we gather today to celebrate our academic achievements, 
we are aware that some of the friends and family who shared in and supported our journeys are no longer with us. Today, we would like to make a special acknowledgement for a member of our community, Ryan Vincent, who is my best friend and roommate. Ryan passed away on May 6, 2018, and he would be graduating today with a degree in chemical engineering. The Mines Board of Trustees has awarded Ryan a posthumous degree, and a member of the Vincent family will be walking for Ryan today in the ceremony. Before I lead us in prayer, would you please join me in a moment of silent reflection in remembrance of Ryan and all those who started with or supported us on our journey and who are no longer with us today. Let us also offer our support for those affected by the shooting this week at STEM school in Highlands Ranch, Colorado, especially Kendrick Castillo's family. Let us pray. Almighty God, bless this fine institution, the Colorado School of Mines, that it may be a lively center for sound learning, discovery, and the pursuit of wisdom. Grant that those who teach and those who learn may find joy in their endeavors. As we celebrate the completion of our studies today, we ask for guidance in the days to come. Whether further studies, the workforce, or the wider world beckon, May we all live fulfilled lives that bless others and contribute to society. We thank you for our dear friends and family who shared in and supported our educational journey and for always believing in us. We thank you for the freedoms we enjoy to pursue learning and life and love. Constantly raise our eyes from the mundane and the predictable to catch a glimpse of the glorious possibilities of adventure and discovery. Give us humble, thankful hearts for all the blessings of this life. In sincerity, we ask all these things. Amen. Jeremiah, thank you. That was beautiful. In his uh, invocation, Jeremiah mentioned this week's shooting at STEM School Highlands Ranch. Um, for those of you who aren't from this area, uh, STEM School Highlands Ranch is a K-12 STEM school where you know, families and students are, have a very strong interest in, um, you know, obviously science, technology, engineering, and, and mathematics. And if you followed the story, you know that a student, Kendrick Castillo, sacrificed his life to save his classmates there. Um, he rushed a shooter, which provided the opportunity for other brave, brave classmates to neutralize that shooter. We've read that Kendrick had aspirations of being an electrical engineer and that he embodied many of the traits of mine students. In fact, uh, many of our electrical engineering students are wearing um, patches today uh, in honor of Kendrick. Uh, we currently have about a dozen students from STEM School Highlands Ranch at Mines, and we have almost 20 that have been admitted and plan to enroll in the fall. Uh, one to let you know that I sent a note yesterday to um, STEM School's executive director offering our prayers and support, and also indicating that uh, we're gonna establish the Kendrick Castillo Scholarship for students from STEM School Highland Ranch, so that Kendrick will be remembered for the opportunity he provided others. Uh, and we'll work out the details on that. So please keep all of them in, you, in your thoughts and prayers, and, and thank you for your support for that. Um, as commencement program, the national flags on stage indicate today's graduates come from all around the world including Elbert, Colorado, and from Tucson, Arizona, Walla Walla, Washington, Kingwood, Texas, and even my hometown of Walnut Creek, California. As I know we got somebody in there. Um, uh, as well as Alaska, Hawaii, and 34 other states, plus Malaysia, France, South Korea, and 29 other countries. Many were attracted to mines because of our size, our focus, close ties to industry, the surrounding natural beauty, and reputation as one of the most highly respected STEM universities in the world. For 145 years, Mines has focused on producing the top scientists and engineers, industry leaders, innovators, and innovations that the world needs. A Mines degree instantly commands respect. It communicates a very strong work ethic and perseverance, and indicates that you are resilient, a great team player, and that you're ready to tackle anything. Might also say something about your ability to go for days without food, sleep, or exercise, but we're won't, not going to get into that one here. Alumni affectionately say it was tough to get into mines, but even tougher to get out. Mine students have to rely on each other as well as their friends, coworkers, and family support and encouragement. 
because of that, I'd like to give the class of 2019 an opportunity to thank all of you who came here today and those also watching on the internet who played critical roles in their successes. So first, will the parents of our graduates please stand? Parents are pretty easy to spot at graduation. It's the pride, it's the tears coming out before the procession even starts. Uh, you know, you, were raised, you raised amazing sons and daughters, and thank you for doing that. They are so bright, creative, energetic, and well, quirky. <laughs> After all, how many schools have a student who pulls a ginormous pie symbol on a trailer behind his pickup truck every March 14th? And how many schools have students who will get up early on the only Friday we excuse them from classes during the year just to pull an ore cart down to the state capitol? So thank you, parents, for supporting and encouraging your sons and daughters to enroll in persistent minds. And while we're at it, if we could give a really special, extra energetic round of applause um, as a special early Mother's Day thank you to all the moms in the audience. Okay, friends, siblings, other relatives, and significant others, please stand. We, we affectionately refer to you as the distractions. You might be the reason why that four-year bachelor's degree took five or six. You certainly are probably the ones our students were texting to while in class. And perhaps you're the ones that entice them to ditch class and homework all together just to hit the trails, head to the ski slopes, or make that short tour at the brewery a weekly event during their senior year. In any case, thank you very much for supporting and distracting our graduates and keeping them grounded and connected to the real world. Now will the faculty, staff, and leadership of Colorado School Minds and Colorado School Minds of Foundation please stand. You are the ones that deliver on our mission to educate, inspire, and innovate, and you're the reason Minds is consistently ranked in the top 5% of all public universities. You teach, advise, inspire, support, and raise scholarship support for our graduates. I like to brag that the Wall Street Journal named you the top faculty across all U.S. public universities for your balanced dedication to both scholarly research and classroom instruction. Congratulations on that, and thank all that you've done to prepare our graduates for their careers and for lives after Minds. Okay, graduates, this group you want to be a little extra enthusiastic for because at the end of the day, they have to approve your degrees, okay? So, would the Board of Trustees please stand? Uh, this is an incredibly accomplished group. They've been, all been appointed by the Governor of Colorado and approved by the state legislature. They're scientists, they're engineers, entrepreneurs, CEOs and business leaders who believe deeply in the transformative power of a Mines degree, and they're all dedicated to Mines success. They're, they're out here today for, for three ceremonies, and it's, uh, you know, it's really because they believe in you and, and uh, really want to support you in your graduation. So thank you very much, trustees, for being here today. OK, in wrapping up my welcome, I'd just like to make a few comments. First class of 2019, are you out there? That was even worse than this morning, I gotta tell you. <laughs> how, how about just the CBEs are you out there? Uh, computer scientists? <laughs> Chemists? <laughs> Electrical engineers? <laughs> All right, somehow the parts are louder than the ensemble. I don't quite understand that one. Anyway, um, hey, you're, 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 you're really special to Mines, and actually personally to me. We all kind of started together here at Mines, 
Um, you joined me on my very first M climb up the mountain. Your transcripts won't fully characterize your times at mines, and some of you will be glad to hear that. <laughs> what you did outside the classroom is equally important and will impact mines and others around the world for years to come. You continued our longstanding traditions like the M climb and E days, even riding down a near frozen Clear Creek this year in cardboard boats in a snowstorm. You also created new student driven traditions like Ordigger Camp to onboard all of our first year students. You gave a lot of yourselves. You helped communities in other countries through Hike for Help and Minds Without Borders. You raised funds for valuable causes like heart health and literacy. About 10% of you are the first ever in your family history to earn a college degree. If you, if you fall in that category, would you stand up, please? We also have a few here uh, who are multi-generational Minds alumni families. If you fit in that category, would you stand up as well? All right. You were peer mentors, residence assistants, and university innovation fellows. You created the Blaster Design Factory and started the Minds Maker Society. You enriched our campus through your art, music, creative writing, and acting. You founded Filmmakers at Mines and created some of the best E-Days videos I've ever seen. You showed the Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference and other NCAA schools that teams comprised entirely of engineers and scientists can win at the highest level of athletic competition and do it with class on the field, court, and track. You gave us new points of pride through your awards in national and international competitions. You won the grand prize at NASA's Collegiate Deep Space Competition, first place at ASCE's Regional Concrete Canoe, Canoe Competition, and first place in IEEE's regional robotics competition. Yeah, right? It's pretty good. You've made us the top athletics program in the Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference and at the end of the winter season, the number two ranked program in the nation out of more than 300 NCAA Division II programs. It's amazing. You showed your potential for future innovation through designing a sustainable eco-village for a community in Guatemala, an accessible welding table for paraplegics, a multi-tool prosthetic arm for a U.S. Navy veteran, and a way to 3D print livable habitats on Mars. You also now hold the, the official mines record for the most canceled class days ever due to snow. <laughs> You're welcome. And never recruit a president from Arizona again. That's a bad move. Uh, according to Lumosity, you are brainier than students at Harvard, Princeton, Stanford, and pretty much every other school in the country. If what you've done at Minds is any indication, you have the potential to be one of those magical classes that universities point to many years after their graduation. After today, you're all heading in different directions, to jobs locally and around the world, to graduate studies at Mines and other top universities, and even to Washington, D.C. to present res results of your research to Congress. Some of you are going straight to a little brick building behind Alderson for a little while. Um, and then off into the world, I assume. Uh, wherever you are going, I want you to know that the Mines faculty, staff, leadership, alumni, and trustees recognize your significant accomplishment. We're all proud to call you graduates of Colorado School Mines. I hope that you share and always carry that pride with you wherever you go in life and your career. And as you make your mark in the world, I hope that you find some way to help others pursue their education dreams and to stay engaged with minds. You are all hell of engineers, hell of a scientists, and ore diggers for life. And I ask you all to become hell of a minds alumni. Congratulations, class of 2019. Okay, now we're gonna do our, uh, our student speaker and our invited speaker. And um, because both of them were unable to make all the ceremonies, we're, gonna, we're going to, um, uh, I'm gonna introduce them and then we're gonna uh, watch a video of the, the speech that they gave a little earlier today. So, um, first person I'd like to introduce is your student speaker, um, Salah, Sarah Alumatum. Sarah is from Saudi Arabia, she did graduate today in the previous ceremony with a degree in geophysics. During her time at Mines, Sarah served as program coordinator for the International 
Students Club and Public Relations Officer for the Saudi Students Association. Sarah was also involved in opening a section for Arabic books in the Arthur Lakes Library, where students can exchange and borrow books for free. After graduation, Sarah will return to Saudi Arabia to begin her professional career with Aramco. So, with that, I'm going to turn it over to the video and see if this actually works. Good morning, everyone, faculty, family, and the class of 2019. It's an incredible honor to be here. Each graduation ceremony, someone is chosen to reflect on the past years. And each year, I attend with open ears, longing for my chance on this platform. If I compare how we all were when we first came here with the people I see in front of me today, I think it's safe to say. The journey was tough, but we became tougher. Graduation is not only for us, but also for family, friends, and beloved ones. Graduation is not only about a degree we're earning. It's about determination, hard work, love, and belief. I asked myself, what does it mean to get an education at Mainz? Is it just about the academics? Engineering is the use of science and math to design solutions and solve problems. We are at Mainz to have experiences that teach us more than solving engineering problems. I realized it's all about the meaning we give to those experiences. The following is just a little of what I have learned from these experiences. I learned that failure is not as scary as it may seem, yet losing hope is scarier. Failing my first geophysics exam was a shock. I tried again, but failed my second one. I lost faith, and at that moment, I undervalued myself, which is what frightened me the most. So I learned how to study smarter, not harder, and never let myself go back to that darkness again. From this, I believe giving up can never be an option. I learned that when you think your heart is broken, put your hand on your chest not broken yet. Rather, it's fighting for you. Do not resist seeking out for help and continue reaching for your goals. My aunt was one of my beloved ones back in Saudi Arabia, waiting to celebrate my graduation. Every time I went back home, she used to make me a hot cup of tea and we shared warm-hearted conversations that she would always end it with. God bless you, Sarah. I'm so proud. She used to see herself through me. She was happy that I have done something that she couldn't do. However, I lost her last year during midterms. She fought her illness with a smile, and I chose to fight my pain with a smile and surround myself with a support system to complete my journey. Our time at Mines was about the challenges we chose to accept, even the small ones. And whether those challenges were good or bad, the way we dealt with them is what makes us who we are. Regardless of your religion, nationality, or past, the only thing that matters now is you, your thoughts, intelligence, and kindness. Our time at Mines was not only about pushing us to the extremes 
or getting us out for comfort zones. No, it was about experiencing being both comfortable and uncomfortable to explore and find ourselves. No matter what your GPA is, for us, our diggers, it's the experiences that matter, not results. Practicing a new sport that you never knew you'd love, helping out someone that you don't know by name to pass a project, taking an elective in your last semester that made you rethink your major, <laughs> taking time explaining that 0.5 credit hours to family members, these are the kind of experiences that define who we are. To conclude, I would like to leave you with the three lessons to carry on in life. Do not lose hope when you fail. Get help when you're lost. And use your experience to make a more developed, efficient, and safer world. To the class of 2019, God bless you all. We have made it. Sarah did a great job. We always have fantastic student speakers. It's uh, amazing how that works out. So our uh, keynote speaker today was Mr. Bruce Grucock. Uh, and we'll, we'll see Bruce's speech here in a second. You'll find a full bio sketch um, for him in today's program. But in brief, Bruce, Bruce is chairman and chief executive officer of Kiwit, one of the largest construction engineering companies in the United States. Bruce is also a proud alumnus of mines and our mining engineering program. Bruce joined Kiwit in 1982 as chief engineer at the Black Butte Mine in Wyoming and was quickly promoted to vice president and operations manager, followed by president of Kiwit Mining Group, election to their board of directors, and in 2000, Bruce became president and chief operating officer. He assumed the role of chief executive officer in 2005, becoming only the seventh executive to lead the company, which traces its roots back to about the same time that Mines was founded. Bruce is a visionary and has for many years been a valued advisor to me and to mine. He challenges us to aspire to greatness and also supports the efforts needed to achieve that goal. For example, his family established a scholarship fund to support out-of-state students, and they also provided the lead gift that enabled us to establish Mine's world-leading center for underground construction and tunneling. And now we will go to the video. Thank you, Paul, and um, I'm actually a little nervous after following that fantastic speech by Sarah, but I will, I will do my best. Very, very great words there. But thank you, President Johnson and the Board of Trustees for inviting to me to this. It's, uh, it's quite an honor, and also welcome, add my welcome to all the graduates and the friends and family that are here. This is a special day, and I, I actually do have a remembrance of the day I graduated as well. And when President Johnson called me, or scheduled a call with me, I, I logically assumed he was looking for another donation from me to the Mines Fund. <laughs> now, Mines Fund is something I've contributed to before and plan to contribute in the future, and I urge all of you to contribute as well. You are graduating from a unique and special place, and it deserves your support. But when he asked me to deliver this address, I, I, quite frankly, I was taken aback. Now, in my role at Kiwit, uh, I, I speak to many groups, large and small. So it's not really the, the fear of, of public speaking, but what could I possibly say that could resonate with this group of graduates? Now, after all, it seems that many commencement speakers tend to be celebrities or politicians of some sort. And, many of them, in my opinion, kind of espousing some well-worn cliches. I'm just the minds guy. I'm just the minds guy and who life has treated pretty darn well. I was blessed with great parents, great wife, two boys, some grandchildren, and a professional career that has been richly, richly rewarding for me. 
Fortunately, in the last 10 to 15 years, I've gotten reconnected with mines and have rediscovered how truly unique this place is. Now, when I was an undergraduate in the 70s, I'm sure I had many of the same thoughts of you. Wow, this is hard, demanding, it's challenging, and will I be glad to get the hell out of this place? <laughs> the good news is, for most Mines graduates, that feeling will pass quickly and be replaced by a sense of great pride in being a Mines graduate. Now, when I was at Mines, the world was a very different place. It was shortly after the upheaval of the Vietnam War. As a matter of fact, uh, ROTC was mandatory my freshman year. We experienced the first oil shock from OPEC, and year-long daylight savings time was thought to be the solution to the energy crisis. And the United States was coming to grips with all sorts of industrial pollution issues. Now, the education I received at the time was grounded in the fundamentals of math and science, but was still largely focused on the traditional earth sciences. Now, we studied hard. Back then, we had to have almost 150 semester hours to graduate. We played hard in an environment of almost all guys and just a handful of women. And I particularly enjoyed E-Days of 1974, the 100-year anniversary of the school. And a, re a replica of an old mining town was set up out on here on what I called Stratton Commons. I guess it's still called that. They set up a replica of an old mining town during E-Days, complete with a saloon. Uh, certainly kind of a different time then. We had, a, we had a good few days there, as I recall. But the mines of today, the mines of today is a far, far better place. If only for the 30 plus percent women that are here. STEM education, STEM education in this country needs more women to tackle the energy and environmental issues. And to think about essentially at that time excluding one half of the population made no sense in my time. So I'm pleased to please to see all the women who are becoming Mines graduates. And I'm also pleased that the school maintains its sharp focus on math and science. But importantly, importantly, has expanded its reach into the other engineering and science disciplines. Mines, in my humble opinion, is the go-to place in the world, go-to place in the world for tackling the issues of earth, energy, and the environment. No place I am aware of is preparing undergraduates and graduates or doing the necessary research to ensure that we continue to raise the standard of living in the world and solve some of society's most pressing challenges. I have said it already and will again. Mines is a unique and an important place. And as you graduate, you will soon grow to appreciate being a part of this. Now, no decent commencement address ends without some advice for the graduates. So I guess this is my opportunity to pontificate a little bit and those who work in my company know that I like to pontificate, but I will be promised to be short and sweet. First thought, as you join the workplace and, and move into the next phase of your life, go forward with a big dose of humility, a big dose of humility about who you are and, and what you've learned. You will be put into situations surrounded by peers or your boss that may have or probably will have more experience or God forbid actually be smarter than you. <laughs> be humble and learn from them. Ask lots of questions. Listen closely to the answers and challenge if need be. In my experience, older folks are more than happy to pass on the lessons that they've learned. Now, you will also be thrust into situations where you are the smartest person in the room. As society tackles the complex problems of energy and environment, you will be called upon to use your technical knowledge to help government regulators, politicians, and members of the general public make informed, logical decisions 
based upon good scientific and engineering principles. These folks will mostly be well educated, but will <clears throat> but lack the expertise that you have. Being humble and acting with humility will serve you well if you get into these type of situations. Additionally, being humble is a key trait of great leaders. Become that person that people are eager to work for and with because they see that, that you value their input. The humble leader model is the best one that I've ever seen. The next piece of advice, and, and this is crazily obvious, work hard and work smart. Now you all have the work hard part down, you figure that out or you wouldn't be here today. And as old fashioned as it sounds, I have not found a single piece of better advice. It rewards you both professionally and perhaps important to you financially as well. Complex, difficult problems often get solved by just putting in the effort and grinding away to get to the right solution. Eureka moments are few and far between. Now that being said, I was also add, work smart. Work smart as well as work hard. By smart, I mean two things. First, focus on what's important to get done. Too often people focus on what's easy or familiar to them and they, they put off the difficult stuff for later. And I know what's important changes over time, weekly, monthly, yearly. So keep asking yourself, am I working on the important stuff? Am I working on the important tasks, things that will make a difference? In my experience, somehow that easy stuff, it takes care of itself somehow. And too many of to-do lists are filled with easy tasks that you can just check off, well, look what I got done today. The important stuff all too often is too easy to put off. And secondly, working smart means working on things you can control or have an influence on. Now in my business, the, the construction business, Often our folks will complain about the weather or something negative that happened a few months ago. I can't control the weather, and believe me, if I could have, we'd be outside today. <laughs> but I can't control the weather and I can't change history. So focus on things that you can influence in the future. Focus on things you can make an impact on. So work hard and work smart. My last piece of advice. Be curious. Develop a habit of being intellectually curious. Ask why a lot. Remember, if, if you ask why five times in a row, you'll get to the real root cause of a problem. Wonder how things work. The notion of being a lifelong learner is sound advice. Don't limit yourself to your field of study. I encourage you to broaden your perspective. Some of the least interesting people I've met, and with all due respect, and certainly excluding the minds faculty, are university professors who often just have a deep understanding of one single topic. I don't find them really very interesting, with the exception of the minds faculty. <laughs> the saying to a man with a hammer, Many things looked like nails capture, I think, the concept well, if you think about it. I encourage you to seek out alternative points of view, however painful that might be. Learn how the world works and what makes people behave, behave good or bad, and understand well, why, they, the way, why they do what they do. Look for opportunities to meet and hopefully converse with interesting people. You will be amazed how that energizes you. And one of the other best pieces of advice I ever received was to read widely. And today it's, it's so easy with the internet and access to get access to books and magazines and articles and newspapers from all around, all around the world. Now because it is so easy to get access, it, it can be a bit overwhelming, no doubt. But I've developed the habit of kind of just skimming headlines. I kind of have a habit early in the morning and skimming headlines through a number of publications that I look at. I'm looking for things that might affect my business or my per personal life 
things that could be an opportunity or maybe a threat. Now, currently, I'm quite interested in artificial intelligence, so AI. And I've challenged Kiwit to be the dominant data-driven company in our industry. Now, admittedly, my industry has been a laggard in adopting digital technology to improve outcomes. Now, we at Kiwit, though, I believe we are leaders. Leaders in regard to using data to drive decision-making, and believe me, largely driven by our, our young folks in our company. And we generate lots and lots of data about our projects. The potential for AI to ensure more predictable outcomes is enormous. And we've actually developed one predictive algorithm we've already done that's yielding significant benefits to us. But I'm sure that if I wasn't curious enough to learn about AI and understand what it is and what the potential was, and then push the organization along, we would be missing out on some fantastic opportunity. So let me wrap up. Three pieces of advice that have served me very well. Enter the next phase of life with a good dose of humility and become the humble leader, the person people want to be around, that they want to work with and for. Next, work hard and work smart. You know how to work hard. Now just add the smart part. Focus on the important things that you can control or influence. Thirdly, be curious about what makes the world work and why people do what they do. Broaden your perspective beyond differential equations and thermodynamics. It will serve you well in the workplace and probably make you a more interesting person. And lastly, and I know I repeat myself here, Minds is a truly a unique and special place. And you are now joining, in effect, a very special club. You're a Minds graduate. Believe me, people around the world, and I've traveled around the world, they all know about this place. And when they find out you're a Minds graduate, they're going to say something like, oh, wow, that's a great school. Boy, it was tough. And you'll probably look at them, smile, and just kind of nod your head. I feel so privileged to be a part of this club, and I hope you are too. Congratulations to all of you, and good luck. Thank you. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Dan Fox, our Vice President for Student Life, to the podium. Mines is one of the first four colleges in the United States to establish a Reserve Officer Training Corps, or ROTC, program. Our first graduating class was commissioned in 1921 and our history of graduating exceptional students into military leadership positions continues today. I would like to invite Captain Brian Hotchkiss of the United States Army to introduce our graduates who earn commissions in the United States Air Force and the United States Army during the course of their studies here at Mines. Please welcome Captain Hotchkiss to the podium. Good afternoon. It's both an honor and a privilege for me to recognize today's ROTC graduates and share in this truly wonderful occasion. Colorado School of Mines has graduated over 2,500 commissioned officers since the inception of the ROTC program in the early 1900s. Today we express our gratitude to these exceptionally professional students as they have chosen a path to serve our nation as officers in the United States military. Over the next few days, four Colorado School of Mines baccalaureate recipients will take their oath, the next step in becoming second lieutenants. They will be commissioned into the United States Air Force and the United, or the United States Army. I wish to extend our sincere appreciation to the cadets' parents and families for the support and encouragement you have provided while your student studied at the Colorado School of Mines. 
We sincerely thank the faculty and staff of Colorado School of Mines for the mentorship and guidance you have provided as these students pursued a commission while their degrees, while earning their degrees in applied mathematics, computer science, and mechanical engineering. Cadet Brandon Hall, computational and applied mathematics, will enter the United States Air Force as a pilot trainee. Cadet Adam Nelson, computer science, will enter the United States Air Force as a cyberspace operations officer. Cadet Ian Obendorfer, mechanical engineering, will enter the United States Air Force as a developmental engineering officer. And Cadet Mitchell White, mechanical engineering, will enter the United States Army National Guard as an aviation officer. Congratulations and best wishes to each of you. Thank you. Thank you, Captain Hotchkiss. Now we finally reached that point in the ceremony you've been waiting for, our graduates being recognized individually for their great accomplishment. As they cross the stage in a few minutes, they're gonna be greeted by our provost, department heads, and uh, I'm gonna invite any of the faculty who would like to get up and shake hands. Go for it. Uh, trustees, if you'd like to shake hands. Well, we can make a line all the way out the building if we need to. Um, we just love congratulating our, our graduates. Um, anyway, uh, they'll cross the stage. You'll see them on the big screen. Uh, parents, this is usually where you get all choked up. Uh, friends and loved ones, this is where you get to um, make all the noise that you want to make. Uh, if you're in the stands, you've got a little extra advantage up there. You got it, good. All right. And, uh, you know, if there's any question, while the graduates are supposed to maintain some air formality while they're crossing the stage, audience, do whatever you want. <laughs> Loud and creative, whatever works, go for it. Um, as the graduates are lining up, I'd just like to take a moment, though, to acknowledge a few students we have who are graduating with honors and other awards that are listed in the program. Um, some are graduating with the academic honors, cum laude, magnum cum laude, and summa cum laude. Others have already received program-specific senior awards at other recognition events. And I'd just like to take this opportunity, if, if any of you who are uh, receiving academic honors or have received one of the program-specific um, honors at another time before this ceremony, would you please stand up so we can recognize you for that? I'd also like to mention that uh, as the graduates cross the stage, shake as many hands as we have lined up here and they go down, there's a group of people standing over on the wall over there. Why don't you, why don't you wave Stu and Damien and, and that looks like my wife over there. Um, uh, they're going to be handing our uh, graduates some gifts and one of those gifts is something that hasn't been around mines for 30 years now. So it's brand new brand new old thing back again. Uh, it's really cool. It was something that uh, a group of students decided they wanted to bring back as a tradition, and it is the Prospector Yearbook. Yeah. Uh, I'm still laughing at some of the pictures in it. Uh, I was looking at it last night. Some of you look just like cats. It's amazing. Um, Anyway, uh, you'll go over there, you'll, you'll get that from there. I just wanted to, to recognize the, um, the students who served on the editorial board for putting the prospector together. Um, Blue Key has decided they want to own this and to keep this tradition going again. And of course, I love being a member. I love Blue Key. Um, all of you know they, they organize the M-Climb. They run with Blaster up and down the stadium field. Um, if you went to the South Dakota School Mines game it was like 81 points. They ran a lot. Um, and uh, they just do a lot of things to keep the traditions here. So if you were a member of uh, the board that put the prospector back together again, or you're a member of Blue Key, would you stand up and be recognized, please? <laughs> okay, with that, we'll start the procession. in electrical engineering.
Dr. Dan Canas, Department Head. Stephen A. G. Anar Batarsaran. Annalise Baker. Alyssa Bull. Luke Bowersox. Derek Brewer. Grace Carter. Cole Casey. Quinn Chang. Alexander Dobbs. Dylan Aberhart. Arianzaya Inkbold. Jacob Fantazzi. Noah Finch. Alexandra Garza. Jacob Gurick. Connor Glatt. Hazen Goodyear. Joshua Grego. James Hinshaw. Stephen Huynh. Arthur Jarden. Solomon Jarman. Jacob Johnson. Eric Kingsley. Jacob Kirshner. Madison Lee. Patrick Lewis Humlicek. Sabina Lindler. Tanner Lucas. Denver Luttrell. Rafe McCaddy. Joseph Miller. Nathaniel Morrison. Peter Moschetti. Tyler Murphy. Seth Myers. Blake Olson. Benjamin Overholt. Joseph Pierce. Matthew Phelps. Austin Promenchenko. Paul Quintana. Jared Rodriguez. Shahira Binti Saharuddin. Alexander Santilli. Louis Setter. Dakota Showman. Nimesh Threstha. Tatiana Simonic. Austin Smith. Paul Stanfell. Quinn Wallace. Mandy Whitaker. Mason Wiley. In Chemical and Biological Engineering, Dr. Anuj Chauhan, Department Head. Devin Adams. Chloe Archuleta. Hannah Bailey. Gavin Baker. 
Brandon Baca. Blake Beasley. Hannah Benson. Morgan Bergstrom. Clayton Braden. Kayla Brady. Tyler Buck. Tristan Kane. Caitlin Calloway. Nathan Costa. John Crowley. Alexandra Daly. Maria Day. David DeGeer. Alexander Elkin. Aaron Garcia. Zachary Goldsmith. Annika Haberland. Alexis Hecker. Janice Jin. Sophia Johnson. Kara Jones. Eric Joplin. Sumer Kamboj. Alexandria Kalaji. Daniel Liu. Susanna Mallison. Matthew McDonald. Alexa Miller. Stephen Mutt. Richard Ocampo. Andrew Pace. Jamie Patterson. Trong Pham. Andrea Pierce. Alyssa Poland. Gillian Riddler. Nicholas Rolletter. Aaron Safadi. Riley Silver. Jennifer Silva. Ari Solomon. Casey Stasek. Huayman Son. Chelsea Tam. Logan Weinman. Kathleen Whalen. Allison Williams. Benjamin Williams. Dominique Worth. Jacob Wolf. Spencer Wrightbull. He Yong Yi. Helen Michaela Zahn. In Chemical and Biological Engineering, Dr. Anuj Chauhan, Department Head. Noor Azlini Abdul Rahabuddin. Grace Anderson. Luke Arnsberger. Graylin Balmer. Cameron Barafaldi. Caleb Beavers. Daniel Brown. Garrett Cardoza. 
Courtney Clark. Carrie Conley. Thomas Crow. LaRose Curry. Braden Kirtland. Jacob Ekstrom. Joshua Evans. Susan Fender. Jewel Ferguson. Alicia Gage. Amber Graves. Ryan Ham. Brian Jenks. Amara Hazelwood. Kristen Hytella. Jamie Hill. Elizabeth Imbler. Mariah Jaramillo. Michael Jensen. Hannah Johansson. Shayla Klein. Julia Latimer. Amy Laux. Tyler Mahan. Matthew Mayno. Paulina Mariasic. Nicole Masters. Megan McIver. Brandon Medina. Brianna Miller. Noor Ain Nadira Mohammed Khalid. Kyle Mowry. Andrew Nagy. Anthony Nodger. Huyen Nguyen. Travis Nordstrom. Carla Osuna. Maria Nicole Perez. Trevor Perkins. Robert Pagoda. Connor Paladna. Walter Prentice. Tristan Priga. Stuart Ramsey. Kimberly Ramuno. Thomas Riley. Christopher Rodriguez. Paige Rossi. Noah Sato. Vincent Salinas. Jordan Sand. Christopher Sands. Roger Scher. Chandler Seamount. Taylor Self. Asya Sergoyan. Rahul Sharma. Samuel Stanka. Hannah Stoner. Jason Tan. Andrew Taylor. Jordan Umrish. Danielle Valerio. Monica Walker. Juan Nershazlin, Juan Azahari. Colton Wardle. Emily Zeeker. 
Annie Zhang. Ryan Vincent. In Chemistry, Dr. Thomas Jeanette, Department Head. Brianne Hammett. Sydney Harmon. Dakota Isaac. Heather Jacobs. Joshua Pearson. Dana Portlock, Leah Rybicki, Marina Toby, Whitney Visgoddess. In Computer Science, Dr. Tracy K. Camp, Department Head. John Baker, Alexander Blair, Easton Bornemeyer, Elizabeth Boyle, William Brown, Reese Coffin, Toby Crocker, Madeline Dieter, Alexander DeGroat, William Den, Gino Di Gregorio, Milo Dietrich, Tyler Dahl. Adam Frick, Jacob Granley, Jeffrey Green, Emily Griman, Kayla Helmstad, John Honan. Ashley Hudson, Robert Imbler, Sydney Johnson, Byron Jones, Tanner Jones, Megan Callis. Tracy Carroll, Zachary Kasica, Tae Woo Kim, Jordan King, Connor Cook, Kyo Seo Koo. Ross Lannan, Tanner Lee, Hao Xin Lo, Erica Manzer, Arthur Mayer, John Meister, Trent Murchison. Adam Nelson, Kai Nichols, 
Jared Parrish. Brendan Pattison. Savannah Paul. Levi Petty. Tomasz Prusak. Tyler Quast. Garrett Quintero. Mark Rystek. Paul Ryman. David Rhine. Jordan Ritchie. Madison Rogers. Riley Miller. William Rumelli. Miguel Ruiz. Alan Sun. Ross Starrett. Benjamin Tarman. Quinn Tenorio. Bethel Tasima. Clara Tran. Amy True. Brandon Verkamp. Joel Walker. Sophie Wilde. Quinn Winter. Daniel Winternitz. Tiam Yu Wong. Catherine Wiley. Johnny Zhang. Sean Zusai. Okay, just stay there. We got a few more. Uh, this next group that's coming up are students who have earned not, not one, but two degrees while they're here at Mines. I, I'm not sure how people ever do that, but um, let's welcome them to the stage. Tyler Blount. Rachel Gabrielson. Robert Jones. Adam Matthews. Samuel Reiner. Ali Zarini. Stay there. So the, the last group of students to cross the stage are students who were selected by their degree programs to be their outstanding graduating senior representative. I have no idea how they're so selected other than they're typically incredibly bright students who are incredibly engaged with things and um, make a really huge impact while they're here at Mines. And so, I should mention that as they cross the stage, it's a great opportunity for programs to show program pride. And Dr. Boyd does some sort of GPA adjustment to the um, degree program that's the most supportive of their outstanding graduating senior. <laughs> so with that, let's meet them. Caroline Foschino. Kaylin Rittenhouse. <laughs> Daniel Longaman. <laughs> John Larrabee. <laughs> Kristen Ferris.
I should mention that the outstanding graduates also get some pretty cool bling. So if you ro run across a student out there with a big medal that, that doesn't have anything to do with athletics on it, it's them. <laughs> so um, that's great. We have a couple other students we would like to recognize. I think I need Dr. Fox for this one. He always helps me with this part. Um, so typically what happens this time of year is, is some of our student athletes are competing in their conference championships right about the same time that we're doing our graduation ceremony and today is no exception. Um, so we, we always like to, uh, to recognize those students and so we make a little personal video um, for them and their uh, parents hand them their degrees while they're watching the personal video that we made for them. So that's, that's taken place uh, for most of them. So we have students who are both participating in uh, the uh, RMAC baseball tournament as well as the regional, is it regional golf? It's the regional golf tournament. So um, Dan, Dan is going to, he's the official name reader. So I'm gonna let Dan read the name of the student who would be here in this ceremony. And it'd be great for us to uh, give a nice round of applause um, in case they're watching in the dugout. So. Yeah, hopefully it's a seventh inning stretch so they can catch this. But uh, from baseball, please give a rousing cheer for Ben Stinson, chemical and biological engineering. So while Dr. Boyd is figuring out which program is going to get the extra GPA boost, I would like to introduce Ms. Patty Starzer, who's going to welcome you to the Alumni Association. Uh, Patty is an, is an alumna for Mines and a graduate of the Mechanical Engineering Program and is connected to probably more people with Mines degrees than anybody else I've ever met, probably. So please join me in welcoming Patty to the podium. Thank you, President Johnson. Graduates, today you leave minds as the beneficiaries of a world-class education, one that has prepared you well for what comes next. You have graduated from one of the most rigorous engineering and science universities in the world. I hope you take great pride and joy in this accomplishment. Your minds education has given you the means to not only solve problems, but to innovate, you came here from every point on the globe to learn, build, and create together. You found common opportunity here, and that gives me great hope for our global future. Yesterday, you were members of a select group, students of the Colorado School of Mines. Today, you become members of a very loyal and valuable group, the Colorado School of Mines alumni. I want you to know that around the globe, you'll find other Mines alumni who know what you're made of. I hope that you and your families will join us in celebrating your new alumni status at a reception in your honor in the Grand Ballroom of the Student Center. Thank you and congratulations, class of 2019. All right. Now we have to do uh, one last piece of business to make these degrees official. And for that, I'm gonna need the help of Provost Tom Boyd and our Chairman of the Board of Trustees, Tom Jordan. All right. Um, so they're gonna, the way this works is they're gonna read some words. They're very special words. If we mess them up, we gotta start all over again, like the whole ceremony. So uh, we try to be really careful about this. Um, and uh, and at, the, at the very, very end, when I sort of give you the look, that's when you move that tassel from the right to the left, okay? All right, uh, we're missing something. Oh. We, 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 we need the sacred lightsaber. <laughs> and uh, I'm... We, we usually pick a very special person who gets to hold this during, the, uh, during this uh, part of things. And um, I'm actually gonna have Dr. Boyd hold it because uh, <laughs> he likes playing with it. Um, and uh, uh, this is uh, the sequence of events are Dr. Boyd's last ceremonies as provost of the university. He's been provost for as long as you've been students. 
He's been a faculty member at Mines for more than a few decades. And uh, he is uh, just a pleasure to work with and, and one of the most uh, dedicated people to your success that I know. So please give me a round of applause and thank Dr. Boyd. For this now, can you hold the lightsaber and read the words yeah, at the same time? I okay. Think so. Okay. I have a PhD now. You should show him the sound effects. <laughs> Candidates for the bachelor's degree, please rise. <laughs> President Johnson, with the approval of the faculty, I recommend that the Bachelor of Science degree be conferred upon these candidates. The candidates who are unable to be present today will be awarded their degrees in absentia. Their names appear in the program. Thank you, Provost Boyd. You do that with style. <laughs> Chairman Jordan, I present to the Board of Trustees these candidates. Each has been recommended by the faculty to receive his or her degree, and I confer with the amazing Colorado School Minds faculty, and it is my honor to present these candidates to the Board for your acceptance. President Johnson, by action of the Board of Trustees of the Colorado School of Minds at our April 29, 2019 meeting, I hereby direct you to award these candidates the degrees that they have earned. All right. I'm, I, I'm starting to like this audience. Okay. This is the coolest part of being president is get to read these final words. So, upon recommendation of the faculty and by the authority of the Board of Trustees, I confer upon each of you the degree of Bachelor of Science in the designated curriculum with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities pertaining thereto. I congratulate you on this outstanding accomplishment. You can now move your tassel. Congratulations, class of 2019. <laughs> Okay, a couple things we got to handle. Go ahead and sit down for a second. Save your energy for the grand finale. A uh, couple other things. So we had a, a mortarboard decorating contest, and um, by some very unscientific method, we've chosen the winners, uh, presumably showing the best mind spirit. And uh, if you'd stand when I read your names, um, somebody's going to come run to you with a with a with a bag of goodies. So uh, first one, Susanna Mallison. Susanna, where are you? Bag is coming out from the side. Jen is delivering it. All right. And second winner, Mariah Hermio. Okay, congratulations. Let's see. We're going to skip that part. We'll skip this part. Skip this part. Okay, we're going to do the short ending. How's that? Okay. For this, I need a little help. Um, would all the um, Ordinger student athletes please stand? I, I just want to tell you a little bit about this group. Um, collectively, across our three ceremonies, we have 89 student athletes graduating today. And amongst that group, we have 17 All-Americans, seven academic All-Americans, 51 students who have participated in conference championships, either on a team or as an individual. 63 of our athletes have uh, participated in NCAA tournament 
appearances, again, either on a team or as an individual. We have uh, two national champions graduating this group. Both were members of the 2015 Men's Cross Country NCAA Championship team. And I know somebody's wearing a big medal today in this group. Um, so how about, first of all, let's congratulate them on those amazing accomplishments. Uh, e each of them, uh, they, they should have like a silver and blue cord, right? Very special one for the athletes. Um, what they probably don't know is three or four years ago, one of your predecessors made a deal with me that in order to get those cords for the athletes, they would agree in perpetuity to lead us in the fight song at the end of our graduation ceremonies. <laughs> okay? Uh, it works really well because if anybody knows the fight song, it's the athletes, because they sing at the end of every, every contest. So I'd, I'd like to invite all of you up. Okay, Janice, I'm going to put you in charge of all of them. <laughs> all right. While they're getting ready, uh, Dr. Boyd, did you choose a group that's going to get the GPA adjustment? Chemistry or CBE. He said it's he said it's either chemistry or CBE. <laughs> so, okay, is it is it is it CBE? Is it chemistry? <laughs> Dr. Boyd hates to admit this, but CBE just won. So, um, we, he and I have a little thing going on this one. Um, anyway, so here's, here's how we're going to wrap up. We need all of your help with this one, and then we'll skip all this other stuff in the ceremony. So um, what we're going to do is the, the, our student athletes are going to lead us in the fight song. We're going to do it um, not football speed. So, because then, then you're done in 10 seconds. But um, some, something a little slower than, than football speed, you guys can pick it out and uh, I'll let Janice be in charge of that. Um, when they're done singing, this is our last chance to congratulate all of our graduates. So audience, this is the time when you can make as much noise as you want. Who's got the cowbells? Okay, Dr. Fox always says, more cowbell. <laughs> uh, Who's got the, the horns? Okay. We're going to use those. You're in the bleachers. You know what to use up there, right? Yep. Okay. When the song is done, uh, the president of our faculty senate, Dr. Kath, is going to stand up. He's going to walk over and pick up the book, the sacred De, Le, De Re Metallica. And uh, the ceremony is officially over when he closes it. Okay. He tends to only close it when he thinks you've made enough noise. And um, please keep in mind, this is, how many ceremonies have you done now? Quite a few. And his hearing gets a little less each ceremony because of the noise. So it, he tends to expect a little bit more out of, out of all of this. Um, so, uh, so you're going to have to convince him to close the book. When the book closes, uh, the ceremony ends. Um, there's, a, there's a new component to this which usually what we would do is just pick up these blasters off the podium and toss them out to the audience just to uh, let, you, let you walk away with one of those. But the uh, Minds Maker deci Society decided we needed something that actually launched blasters. <laughs> uh, so this is the Holy Blaster Blaster. And um, we're going we're gonna to see it in, in action, so the, the, what we will be launching blasters. I, I did tell you the students were a little quirky, didn't I? And so they, 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 they had to do this. But um, anyway, uh, Claire's here to launch, launch blasters for us. Um, when that happens, the group over there is going to crank up the tunes, right? And um, uh, at the end of the song also, if the students, if you feel so inspired. It's a great time to throw up your hats if you'd like to be part of a photo op. And then while you are chasing your hats, fighting over blasters, and the music is playing really loud, the 
people on the podium are going to sneak out that door. So uh, the only way we ever get out there without losing people is to distract the audience and get them to stay in one place. So, um, so we'll be doing that quick exit. And what we hope to do is um, to meet all of you again outside the rec center or um, up in the student center. We have a reception in honor of our graduates. And we, we invite all of you, please, to come be part of that. We've got our mascots out. You can take pictures with them. And um, again, uh, hope you just have a fantastic time today. Thanks, everyone, for being here. Class of 2019, you're amazing. Again, we, we started together and you're leaving without me, so I'm a little disappointed about that. But, um, uh, but in any case, uh, so everybody's got their part. So athletes, you're going to do the song. Got that. Uh, audience, you're going to clap and stomp and horns and more cowbell. Dr. Kathy will handle the book. Claire, you got the blaster, 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 blaster. Those guys got the music. Platform party. Why don't we go ahead and stand up right now? Makes the sneaking out part a little easier. Okay, everybody ready? We can do this. All right, athletes, do it for us. Thank you. Graduates, stand up. <laughs>